This is a story about the Boeing 737 MAX 8 and the Airbus A320 Neo. It's a story about two plane manufacturers, Boeing American and Airbus European, and a long battle for business between them, their rivalry and the competition for the same customers, the world's airline operators. You see, Boeing is a business. It's a business that has shareholders, lots of them. It must make money Otherwise, people won't invest in Boeing. So Boeing has to sell planes, lots of them. If Boeing doesn't sell lots of planes, their investors stop investing and people lose their jobs and livelihoods. But this story doesn't begin here. On March 10th, 2019, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 crashed. The plane they were travelling on was a brand new American-made Boeing 737 MAX 8. The plane was just four months old. It crashed into a field in Ethiopia. Everyone on board was killed, 149 passengers and 8 crew. But that wasn't the first 737 MAX 8 accident. In October 2018, five months earlier, another 737 MAX 8 crashed. That's me drawing the plane. Thirty minutes after takeoff, Lion Air Flight 610, operating a three month old 737 MAX 8, crashed into the Java Sea. On board, all 181 passengers and 7 crew were killed. Both airlines were operating the same plane, the 737 MAX 8, and both planes had a problem which caused them to crash. So what caused these planes to crash? Some said they had a problem with their engines. But there was nothing wrong with these engines, they were new, and they were working just fine. To begin to answer that question, we have to look back. One of its main competitors is Airbus. Airbus is a European aircraft manufacturer. Back in 2010, Airbus made an announcement. Their popular A320 single aisle passenger airplane would be updated. They'd build a new A320 new engine option. Airbus called this plane the A320 Neo. The Neo has significantly bigger, more efficient LEAP engines. Airbus promised the A320 would use much less fuel, which would reduce operating costs and maximise profits for airlines and their shareholders. Less fuel equals less cost to the airline, much less. All this at a time when fuel costs $2.50 per gallon. Airbus said their A320 Neo would be as much as 15% more fuel efficient. Because the body of their A320's fuselage was designed with a significant clearance from the ground, Airbus engineers could keep their big engines under the A320 Neo's wings. Keeping the engines under the Neo's wings also meant it had minimal effect on the way their plane flew. This all made the Airbus A320 Neo a big problem for Boeing because they had a plane low to the ground they couldn't fit larger engines under the wings but to build a new plane from scratch take even more time and more money a lot more. Then the bombshell moment came for Boeing. The summer after the June 2011 Paris Air Show American Airlines announced an order for 260 planes from Airbus. Half the order was for the A320 Neos. 
American Airlines became the first American airliner to order from the European Airbus manufacturer in more than 20 years. It was a turning point. Boeing had to come up with a newer, more efficient plane of their own, and quickly. Boeing's former chief of the 737 program wanted to build a brand new plane. He knew a re-engineering the 737 would have major ramifications for the 737's entire airframe, and he said so. One month later, Boeing unveiled their plan for the 737 MAX 8, Boeing's re-engine fuel-saving update to the 737. Time was not on Boeing's side. Boeing couldn't afford to take the time to design and build a new plane while Airbus sold their planes to Boeing customers. But Boeing still had the clearance problem if the new 737 was to have the new, bigger, more fuel efficient engines. So Boeing engineered the solution. The mo they moved the position of the engines from under the wings to a position forward and just above the height of the wings. That was a new problem. It was a problem because the Boeing's 737 MAX 8 was meant to behave like other 737s, and it didn't. The position of the new, much bigger leap engine altered the aerodynamics of the plane. The engine's further forward and higher position means they created lift while the plane was in a steep climb. In certain circumstances, this made the nose of the 737 MAX 8 pitch up and potentially stall. Rather than require pilots undergo extensive new training, which would cost airlines money and possibly customers, Boeing looked for an automated solution. They needed a system that would prevent the 737 MAX 8 from stalling by forcing the plane's nose down ever so slightly. Boeing didn't have to look far for the solution. They'd already invented it. Boeing engineers called the FIX the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, or MCAS for short. Boeing engineers had first come up with the MCAS for use in the KC-46A Pegasus, a military fuel tanker airplane specifically developed for the United States Air Force. In the case of the 737 MAX 8, Boeing engineers designed the MCAS to activate when the plane had its flaps up in high thrust and a high angle of attack. In other words, a stall scenario. If this occurred, the MCAS would prevent the stall from happening by pushing the plane's nose down repeatedly if necessary. But the MCAS aboard the 737 MAX 8 and the KC-46A Pegasus were not the same. The 737 MAX 8 MCAS didn't include all the safeguards that were part of the military version. But the pilots of Lion Air Flight 610 and Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 faced a more troubling peril. They weren't even aware their plane had the MCAS system at all. The training material they were provided did not mention it. All that was needed for the pilots to fly this new variant of the 737 series was a two and a half hour computer module. And the module didn't mention the MCAS system either. Had both of the pilots been aware, they may never have crashed. Air safety investigators are now investigating these two fatal crashes. A year later, the entire worldwide fleet of the 737 MAX 8s is grounded. A further 400 737 MAX 8s, manufactured by Boeing, but not delivered, sit idle. Don't forget to subscribe now on YouTube to my channel. It's called Eminence Aviation. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to look out for more videos just like this.